Hello everyone. So now everything is done. Uh, the gateway has finished building and we have the container image uploaded to uh, the GitLab container registry. There was one small change I did uh, while uh, I was offline. So I actually changed the, the tag of the image for all the, all the scripts for, for all the projects to actually be latest rather than the name of the branch and the commit because th this would make it actually easier to, to do the deployment to Kubernetes. On Sonar Cloud, we now have the, um, the report for, for, for the components. So this is, for example, how the um, report for the UAA component looks like. So we have a pretty, pretty decent coverage. There are a few vulnerabilities, but nothing uh, that cannot be fixed fairly straightforward. And in any case, this is, you know, a good way to kickstart writing unit tests and, you know, getting you set up with everything you need. Then uh, I also went ahead and created a Kubernetes cluster on GCP. Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty big for a, a, a testing cluster. So um, it's 10 vCPUs and almost 40 gigs of RAM. The reason why I did this is because uh, we are going to deploy a lot of components. Okay, so in order to do the deployment, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to create a new folder for that. So currently I'm in my, my sandbox where I have all my projects. I'll just go ahead and create a new folder called Kubernetes. And I'll cd into it. And I will run the Kubernetes jhipster subgenerator. Okay, and I'm going to deploy a microservice application uh, and the root directory for, for my gateway and microservices is actually one level up. Okay, uh, and I now will just choose to deploy all three of them. Uh, and I, this is the point where I can actually add uh, the jhipster console. So I'm gonna use it um, for this deployment as well. Uh, for the registry, I'm just going to leave the default password. I'm going to use the default namespace for Kubernetes. And the Docker repository is actually going to be this one that I'm just going to copy over here. So I've made these projects public uh, in order for uh, Kubernetes to be able to pull the images, I mean, actually for the GCP to be able to pull the images from jhipster repository. Uh, otherwise, I, a step would have been necessary to do authentication and I just wanted, wanted to keep things simple. Okay, so the name uh, of uh, the Docker repository is going to be registrygitlab.com slash jhipster2. Uh, just make sure not to add uh, a slash at the end because actually uh, the generator is going to add it for each of the projects. Okay, then it's the default. I'm not going to enable Istio because I'm using the I'm using Spring for this, so I need it for the time being. And I'm actually going to create a load balancer so that I can access my application. Okay, so now it went ahead and generated all the files for the deployment. As you can see, I have one for, for Kubernetes, uh, for, for sorry, for, for the conferences, the console, gateway, registry, and UAA. Now, all I need to do is actually go ahead and use the script, and this will create all the necessary components. All right, so uh, now it's created all the components. Let's just go. Let's just go see what's happened on the cluster. So we can see all the components that have been created. So this will just take a, a while for for the components to be up and running. We can go ahead and refresh, and it's just going to be a few minutes until we can actually access the application. 
so uh, we can see the services okay so um, among the things that, that will be accessible we'll have the console and the gateway the external IP is currently pending but soon we will have uh, an IP address that we could use to access the application okay so now everything is up and running uh, we can go and check also the command line and we can see that all pods are up and running if we get the services services we can see that both the gateway and the jhipster console now have an external IP uh, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to my browser and I'm gonna hit port 8080 and voila we can see the application so now we can actually sign in and let me just do admin and admin okay and now we are logged in and we can go to our entities and conference currently there are no conferences and we can go ahead and create one let's just do conference uh, let's just hit 40 participants and let's just do 2000 uh, let's just do yeah some 2020 01 uh, 10th of January just go and also go for an hour uh, let's just start off in the morning at 9.45 okay save okay and now we've created this one and yeah we can go and see other things such as user management so we can see what other users we have here let me just okay so there, there was a small hip, hiccup uh, I just fixed it uh, as I said we are able to see the user management we can see some of uh, some of the roles and other users that are created uh, we can also see the health uh, some metrics okay around this and that's pretty much it uh, one interesting thing to see is that now we can go and see kubectl get service and we can actually log into the console and just go 80 80 no it's five sorry five six so one okay so this is loading up and we can actually see the logs okay so this is working okay so that's about it um, I hope you enjoyed the, the series and yeah thanks for uh, thanks for watching